we are going to go to Ohio in the United States of America to talk to Professor um, Sean Easley, as we have been talking through him, oh gosh, for pretty much all of this year. On the, on the imminent, imminent now, now presidential, presidential election, which, which will take place Tuesday our time, Wednesday, Wednesday their time, um, and, and obviously the gubernatorial uh, elections, elections as well, plus, plus what, all, all of the House of Representatives, how many is that, 530-something? Um, 400 and something, I don't know, Sean will tell us. Um, and uh, then I think there are various Senate races as well. It is, it is going, going to be a huge day, day certainly, certainly for the United States, States of America, America. I, guess I guess for much of the world, world because it does influence um, what the biggest, biggest or the most powerful nation on the planet does. It does, does, does tend, tend to influence the rest. The rest. And, and given, given that we're part of the Western Alliance and we tend to look to the United States for leadership in so many areas, um, it's going to make a difference to us as well. Joining, joining us to talk to us about the latest that has been developing, uh, uh, what, six days, days away from the final event, is Professor Sean Easley joins us now. Sean, Sean thank, thank you so, you so much for making his time available to us. To what time is it and what day is it in the United States at the moment? Yeah, it's uh, Wednesday afternoon, uh, Wednesday, Wednesday uh, afternoon. October 30th, 30th, and it's 4.10pm, uh, p.m. So okay. 16.10. So your time... When, when are, are you expecting, expecting to know the, who, what, the, who has been elected as the President of the United States of America? Hopefully before the Electoral College meets in the middle of December. <laughs> <laughs> That's very <laughs> precise. <laughs> All right. All right. Um, um, so, you're so you're not expecting, not expecting uh, in, a in a week's time, time from now, now you'll know. You know... You know one scenario, as we've talked about, you could have a definitive answer that night. Uh, other scenarios, I think, are probably more likely that it will string out over several days. Uh, and if I could take just a second, I'd like to correct something I said last week about North Carolina. Um, I told you, or we talked about, I held that silly little <coughs> sign up uh, proclaiming that I was really watching North Carolina. And a couple things have changed on the ground there. Uh, the first thing that's happened is they've changed their laws about processing early voting. And uh, they now cannot start counting ballots until after the, um, you know, kind of on ground voting day ballots have been turned in, whereas they used to do it earlier. So I was predicting a slightly earlier forecast for that. Uh, and then invertly, uh, the other thing they did was they made it so that any ballot that comes in after 7.30 p.m. on the election day will not be counted where they used to allow several days for later ballots as long as they had a postmark by the election day in to count. So there's been kind of both a back and forth going on as to whether or not their forecast is going to come, as I had hoped and predicted when we talked last week, early in the evening to give us some kind of sign as to whether or not, uh, you know, Trump or Harris is having a, a definitive turnout in that state. And again, I predicted that if uh, Harris surprisingly did well in that, in that state, state uh, that it might in some way or another give us some indication of which way the vote was going to go. So I wanted to make sure your viewers uh, got caught up on that like I have recently in the last few days about North Carolina election law. Okay. okay. I've, I've seen, seen uh, um, I, think I think the New York, York Times, Times published their, their latest polls, uh, the Siena polls, polls for uh, the, the battleground states, states of Georgia, Georgia North Carolina, Carolina Pennsylvania, Pennsylvania, Michigan, Michigan Wisconsin, Wisconsin, Nevada, Nevada Arizona. Arizona. And, and if, if those, those polling results were to translate into reality, I, 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 but just, you know, as they are at the moment, President Trump would be or be re-elected. Um, and I find that surprising because the momentum was very much with Kamala Harris, particularly coming off the nomination and the Democrat convention, uh, her debate with Donald Trump, on which most people thought she won, What's, What's gone, gone wrong? wrong? Well, well, I think we all knew that there would be a uh, kind of honeymoon. Yeah. And uh, she you know, rocketed out of uh, the middle of July uh, through August to way into deep September. Uh, and then the debates and then Labor Day uh, weekend. Uh, and that's kind of when things we all expected would uh, <laughs> kind of start leveling out and give us the best indication of how it was going to generally go. And so that high or euphoria that the Democrats were enjoying for a while has dissipated, no question. Uh, Mr. Trump has been uh, climbing, if you will. 
Um, but I still don't think it's uh, anything to uh, in, either celebrate on either side. It's just too close. And even in your scenario, if the polling that we look at remains true, you know, all of them are well within the margin of error. You know, the polling uh, spreads are within uh, one to half a percent, or I should say half to one percent. And polling errors typically try to allow themselves three to three and a half percent. So there really isn't anything definitive coming out of the latest uh, REMA polls. But certainly, uh, you know, it's trending. I mean, if I were Mr. Trump, I would be happy with the direction it was going. If I were Ms. Harris, I would be unhappy with the direction it was going. But I don't think that in any way defines uh, what we're going to see happen next week. No, no, all, all the, the polls, though, though without exception, suggest that, that, that um, no, no one who is a smart person, person would definitively declare one candidate's going to win or the other because they are so close. close. In the history of US politics, politics particularly presidential politics, politics, have there been polling um, similarities as, 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 as being displayed with this one? Similarities, I think that they really have indicated that this polling uh, is the closest it's ever been in a modern presidential election. Uh, the closest presidential election ever was 1960. Uh, Senator John F. Kennedy from Massachusetts uh, uh, versus uh, you know, Vice, City Vice President Richard Nixon. Uh, and that literally came down to uh, a few votes in a couple of states, although the Electoral College spread was considerably greater uh, the popular vote was incredibly close, uh, as it has been in the last couple of times. Uh, well, I shouldn't say that. In the last couple of times here, of course, we've had closer electoral votes, but a much bigger spread in the popular vote. So this is unique in that respect. Uh, they've never come down to this close to the election and literally not been able to say something definitive other than the my gut tells me, which is what you're talking about. Nobody uh, that would... Uh, uh, claim to have any uh, real uh, scholarly observation of the numbers would uh, venture a guess at this point. And, you know, if I could, and I, I apologize, we talked again last week about uh, the difference between the kind of forecast polling, the prediction polling, and the actual polling. And I wrongly said that the uh, Nate Silverman uh, was the guy that is responsible for the New York Times and stuff. And in fact, I got my Nates wrong. <laughs> The Nate is Nate Cohn. He's the guy that does the Times Siena poll. He is the one that's in the polling market, whereas the other Nate, Nate Silverman, is the guy that we correctly identified as the uh, originator of 538. And he is, as you said, kind of in the uh, probabilistic market. And he's the one that takes betting and, and does that kind of thing, using statistics to essentially gain things out. So even Silverman says that the first poll he looks at is – his other Nate, uh, twin brothers of different mothers, uh, Nate uh, Khan, and the Times Siena polls. So uh, they're closely related, but I wanted to make sure that I, again, kind of corrected myself and clarified that uh, for your listeners. That's, That's fine. fine. Listen, the, the other thing, thing um, you, you were also talking, talking and have, have warned us, in actual fact, fact um, in our conversations, conversations Sean, about, about the October surprise, surprise. You, know, you know, something, something that, that is going to make a difference, difference. that's going to upset the narrative. It's, it's going, going to be shocking, shocking or disturbing, disturbing um, that, that will cause uh, an, 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 an unalterable sort of momentum for one side. It doesn't, <sighs> doesn't appear that there's been one this time. No. Uh, and, of course, uh, Donald Trump is famously, you know, Teflon Don. And even what would seem like the most egregious uh, so-called October surprises, the one that happened in 2016, for example, uh, the revelation of his uh, on-air uh, discussion of uh, uh, what he does with, you know, with women when he sees them and so on and so forth. Um, nothing like that has occurred. Uh, there was a, a couple of weeks ago, uh, his chief of staff came out and uh, said that uh, he uh, absolutely understood him to be an uh, autocrat. And he even used the term fascist. That hasn't moved the needle. Uh, although the cumulative effect, I think, perhaps of many high-profile Republicans coming out and uh, weighing in against uh, Mr. Trump might have some effect, but as you're right, it hasn't had anything near the kind of earthquake dynamic that sometimes these so-called October surprises can have. Um, just yesterday or the day before, for me, uh, uh, he had a big rally in Madison Square Garden where someone made an ostensibly racist remark uh, about Puerto Ricans, and they're claiming that it is potential have some effect because there are large numbers of Puerto Rican Americans. Well, that's a 
misstatement. Pardon me, Puerto Ricans are Americans. Puerto Ricans living in in uh, the continent of America in various swing states that might have an effect on uh, you know, some kind of small turnout. But again, when you're talking about half a percentage point, a small turnout could be definitive. But no, you're absolutely right. There has not been any massive revelation of uh, of the sort of thing that we typically qualify as a October surprise.